Well, this afternoon I caught up with Nick Clegg myself and asked him first if Vince Cable should have been sacked for discussing the Murdoch bid with complete strangers. It was completely wrong. It was totally inappropriate what he did. He acknowledges that himself. Uh, he feels very embarrassed about it. He's apologised. And David Cameron and I decided very, very quickly that, uh, for all the obvious reasons, he should be removed from any further role in taking the decision on that deal or, indeed, having any role in uh, conducting policy in that area of policy. And that's why we removed it and put it somewhere else uh, in, in government and given the responsibility to somebody else. But that doesn't mean that Vince Cable uh, should not continue to play a role in doing the kind of thing that I'm visiting here, providing support to uh, apprentices, uh, providing support to uh, vocational education, sorting out the banks, reforming our, our universities, and generally helping to rebalance the British economy, which was left in such a disastrous state by Labour. But I can hear in, in, in my mind's ear a very different Nick Clegg in opposition to Labour, and had a Labour minister in the last government done what Vince Cable's done, you would have demanded his sacking. I think what is important is that you would, wouldn't we you? are Let's very be clear. You would have. Well, well, You'd have called I, for his resignation. I, I, John, I'm, I'm not going to play sort of if, if, if sort of um, hypothetical um, sort of politics with you. Uh, in government, in this government, we took a rapid decision that Vince Cable should be stripped of the powers uh, that he had uh, because of what he said. We did that. We were very open and clear about that. And we now expect him, as indeed David Cameron and I expect everybody in the government, to get on with the job of sorting out the mess we inherited from Labour, and in particularly in the case of the Secretary of State for Business, for Vince Cable, to help rebalance the economy uh, after the terrible mismanagement in recent years. And that's what uh, I expect him now to, 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 to get on with. The erstwhile government adviser, Lord Young, a Conservative, makes the rambling observation, you've never had it so good, he loses his job. What's the difference between him and Vince Cable? Surely Vince Cable's offence is much graver. Well, as you know, Lord Young was um, looking at only a very uh, narrow and single uh, uh, issue, uh, and in exactly the same way, we have taken the one particular issue uh, which is now incompatible with what Vince Cable has said, uh, away from him. We have stripped him of those powers. We've put it somewhere else uh, in government. And I think that makes sure that uh, the views he's expressed cannot in any way influence the decisions on that deal. That is the right thing to do. I think we've been clear about it. And I think we should now uh, allow the government as a whole, and indeed Vince Cable, to move on and do the job that people expect him and us to do which is to sort out the economy, sort out the mess we've inherited from Labour and provide the better, fairer, more prosperous, uh, prosperous future that everybody wants. But in effect, are you telling us this is the anything goes, Cabinet? No, not at all. Uh, clearly, well, by, what about your uh, other three ministers? I mean, you've got three more ministers outside the Cabinet who've, who've been talking against government policy, coalition policy. Well, I don't think it should be a sort of shock or surprise to anybody that Liberal Democrats and Conservatives have different views on things. We are, after a coalition of different parties. My own view is, and I will uh, stress this to all my colleagues, is that for coalition government, indeed any government, to be successful in the long term, the differences that we self-evidently have, we're not the same party, we are two parties, uh, David Cameron and I are two party leaders with different views on a range of different things, is to thrash out those differences uh, in private and then deal with them together um, uh, so that we can sort out the problems that this country faces. That is what this coalition government is all about and that is exactly what we're going to do. But let's just get it clear, the, what the three ministers, uh, Mr Moore, Mr Davy and Mr Webb said, e each, each individually on different things, tuition fees, housing benefit, etc., um, what they did was not wrong. Well, of course I don't think it, it, it helps at all for any uh, uh, government minister from whatever party to provide, you know, by accident or by design, a kind of running commentary on policies they like or dislike. It didn't, shouldn't be a surprise, however, that much as I expect there are some Conservatives who don't like other parts of what the coalition uh, government is doing, there are Liberal Democrats who um, uh, have their reservations about particular areas of policy. Have you spoken but I think to we've those got to get on. We've got to have you spoken to those three I today? Have not, I, I haven't, no, because I'm out and about in Oldham at the moment. But of course I will speak to all my ministerial uh, colleagues. Uh, but the point is this. I think what people expect this coalition government to do as a whole is not tie itself up in knots about who said what when, but to make sure that we get on with dealing with a disastrous economic situation, the disastrous economic legacy we inherited from Labour, and set the country on a better, fairer, more prosperous path in the future. And that's what we're going to do. Do you feel you're personally having to carry a very heavy burden? I mean, 
uh, there's all these ministers speaking in the way they are. You have then to come out and defend them. And you get all the brickbats for um, your own leadership of the Liberal Democrats, with which many of your members disagree. <laughs> well, I think it's just one of the fates of being a leader of a party. You get blamed for everything. I'll probably get blamed for the weather soon, soon enough. But look, I, you know, I am immensely proud that the Liberal Democrats are in government and that I'm the Deputy Prime Minister of a new coalition government that is actually delivering many of the things that I've campaigned on for a long, long period of time. Not, before you uh, uh, remind me, not everything that uh, I might have wished. But, for instance, next April there are going to be pensioners in this, in, this, in this community here in Oldham who will have their pensions linked to earnings for the first time in years, something I've campaigned on for, for ages. We'll have l hundreds of thousands of people on low pay taken out of paying any income tax altogether because we, this coalition government, have raised by a £1,000 the point at which you start paying income tax. Again, something that I campaigned on day in, day out in the general election. And generally what we're doing as a coalition government, all parties in this, in this government, is sorting out the mess we've inherited from Labour so that, the, so that the country as a whole can move forward. That is what I'm interested in. That is what we will always work towards. Final point. You mentioned the general election there. You were god of all you surveyed. You won those uh, uh, debates. Uh, pe people raved about you. And now they're raving at you. Yeah, well, look, it's been, uh, you know, self-evidently quite a, a roller coaster a year. I have never been under any illusions that when you enter into government, and particularly for a party that's been in opposition for many decades, at a time of great scarcity, because uh, the Labour government left the cupboard bare, spent all the money that there was, and, in, and passed on to us this terrible legacy of, a, of an economy that wasn't functioning properly, that by, by definition we were going to have to do things which were going to be controversial and at times unpopular. But to govern is to choose, and I make no apology in being the leader of a party that is now making difficult choices which I genuinely believe will stand the test of time. Nick Clegg talking to me earlier. Well, now, the Liberal Democrat MP Mike Hancock will not face charges over claims of inappropriate behaviour towards a female constituent. Mr Hancock was arrested and bailed on suspicion of indecent assault in October. The allegations centred on a series of visits he made to the woman's home between March and June. He'd always denied any wrongdoing.